Hi, welcome everyone um, to today's BCB live seminar with Alice Chang. How is everyone? Good. Um, I'm going to start with just a quick introduction uh, for our guest, um, who is the founder and CEO of Culinary Agents. Um, Alice Chang is the founder and CEO, as I mentioned, of Culinary Agents, a professional networking and job marketing website designed for the hospitality industry. Having spent 13 years working at IBM and helping companies apply technology to solve business problems, Alice brings her ex experience into the hospitality industry to solve inefficiencies and gaps around talent sourcing and career development. Passionate about helping people build careers, Alice takes leadership roles and mentoring across all industries with a focus on helping ta talent succeed in their careers. She currently serves as an advisor for Food X an accelerator program for food-related tech startups, and is also a member of the Society of Fellows for the Culinary Institute of America. So welcome. Thanks, Paula. Thanks for having me. You got it. Um, so wanted to kind of, you know, start off, this is certainly a difficult time that we're in with um, the industry, especially in the hospitality side, um, all being shut down and employees being furloughed or like, you know, or released from their positions. And um, now everybody kind of going back into this recovery mode as all the states start to open up into different phases. Um, so where do you really see all of that going? And, you know, Culinary Agents has this incredible um, platform to really service the community. And um, so where do you see it all going? Yeah, well, well, thank you for that. Um, and I'll, I'll kick off um, uh, to also highlight that there's a question panel. So as we're going, if there are questions, you know, free, feel free to write them in. And Paula and I are going to just have a conversation here. Um, you know, it's really quite interesting. Culinary Agents, for those who aren't familiar, um, is a website that's really focused on helping talent with career related resources to navigate, you know, folks who are just looking for a job, a temporary job, a full time job. And then also, what are the career paths and the opportunities beyond that job? Um, because this industry is so diverse and so robust. So as you can imagine, um, when uh, COVID-19, you know, initially, you know, really, you know, hit the phase of, of uh, shelter in place and lockdown and businesses were mandated to close, um, there was a lot of uncertainty, especially um, for the food and beverage industry, um, as far as, you know, how is this going to impact my job, uh, how is this going to impact my business? Um, and what we saw was, depending on the state and city, different uh, on a different rolling schedule, folks were close, closing for mandates. Um, what followed wa was, you know, weeks of uncertainty and businesses that went into, um, you know, uh, survival and fight mode, fight in, in, in the most positive sense. So, you know, entrepreneurs, small business owners, independent restaurants, you know, very quickly mobilized not only to support their teams um, because of the unfortunate layoffs and furloughs, um, but then you saw across the U.S. Um, um, leaders coming together to form things like the Independent Restaurant Coalition. This need and this recognition to join voices to fight for um, you know, the, the independent restaurants across the US and millions and millions of jobs that were lost. So, um, you know, weeks of that. And because Culinary Agents serves both sides of the marketplace, both talent and businesses, we have about 840,000 talent, front of house and back of house um, of all levels on our site, as well as about 26,000 um, restaurants and hotels and hospitality related businesses. We had a really unique, um, perspective of seeing how this was impacting both sides. And we mobilized immediately to support talent. We had a lot of people write into our help ticket line um, questions around, you know, how to claim, how to file for unemployment, um, questions about, you know, are there jobs in other areas that we're seeing that we can help? And so we quickly put together a COVID-19 resource kit that was really focused on talent with the most common questions that were being asked. What are the resources? How can we aggregate it? And because we're nationwide, we wanted to make sure that, you know, folks in New York saw what they needed to see in New York because they didn't necessarily, you know, care about the information or wasn't relevant to them, you know, to uh, for a different state. Um, and so, you know, ever since then, we've just been adding to these resources uh, on our site, just culinaryagents.com under resources. So 
it's been um, obviously a very trying time, um, I think, uh, across, you know, business owners, across talent at any level. Um, and, you know, I, I think what, what we've seen and as things have evolved is, you know, little spurts of, of a lot of positive signs of regrowth uh, and recovery in the past couple of mm -hmm. weeks, which is something that we'll, we'll also get into. Um, have you seen an influx from certain areas of the country as far as people um, and jobs and companies opening up and, and going to you to say, we're ready, can you, you know, we're ready to ramp things up again or vice versa, or are you seeing an influx of people coming in from a applicant standpoint over certain areas of the country? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question because on a really positive note, the past three weeks, or I would say the past three and a half weeks, we've seen a tremendous uptick on the number of jobs that are being posted, which was an indicator that businesses were starting to plan for their phased openings. And I think, you know, much like, much like all of the things that have occurred in the past couple of weeks, you know, it always, it's always prefaced with, well, we don't, you know, the uncertainty of, we don't know what's going to, come up next or um, you know how how the pandemic is going to kind of pan out the next couple of weeks um, and months um, you know there are a lot of guidelines from the CDC and OSHA that businesses needed to really prepare for to ensure the safety of not only their teams but also the guests right and at the end of the day you know you can do only so much to make sure you're prepared and you're protecting your teams and all the guidelines are documented but you know, sometimes depending on the city, depending on, you know, the place, um, you know, guests may not comply or they may just, you know, be having too much fun and, and you know, situations will arise. So I think to your question, we've definitely seen the reopenings in line with, um, you know, state and city openings um, across the board. The interesting mm -hmm. thing is certain cities that potentially didn't hit their peak or didn't get affected as you know, as impacted as New York City, for example, um, are starting to see different spikes now. Um, and so I think this is one of those things where where you physically are and, um, you know, what type of business you have really impacts your ability to phase your reopening strategy. As someone who was um, employed by a restaurant or even hotels or anywhere in the hospitality industry that was let go, and now they're coming back in where capacity is at 50% in the interior of the restaurant. How many servers, how many, um, you know, back of house, front of house staff has been being cut back? So how do they leverage themselves to be a little bit more, um, you know, of a force to be reckoned with when they're up against so much competition and now less, you know, not as many jobs are available? Really? Yeah, and and that's that's I think something that um, we're we're definitely seeing both talent and businesses trying to um, carefully plan uh, the kind of the the I keep calling it the phase kind of recovery because every state and city have their different requirements of capacity in different phases. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best practices, one of the things that we've been seeing that talent have been doing, and you kind of making the most of their time. Uh, now is upskilling, cross-skilling, kind of honing in on certain specialty areas that um, you know you've been meaning to, to. They've been meaning to kind of look into. I think uh, you know time has always been something that people who work in this industry just don't have enough of. You know, always working um, and you know really uh, tired, like tiring work. And you're serving, you're running around. Um, and uh, working, you know, uh, long hours. And so a lot of folks who found themselves with some, a little bit of extra time, for better or worse, um, focusing on, you know, what are the skills that I've been meaning to check out? Um, you know, businesses are looking at how, you know, what are the essential skills uh, and positions that they need um, because they're opening and at reduced capacity, they simply can't, follow the same way that they were staffing up um, prior to, you know, for, for many reasons. And the other thing is, um, what, what advice do you have for those individuals that maybe should be exploring other 
avenues of you know the supply chain from a job perspective right um maybe they were in one particular role but matt maybe they're saying you know what my skill set is pretty diverse should i be looking at other areas of the food service industry or hospitality industry where i could align probably a little bit more positively with which might be growing you know or opening up at a faster rate yeah i think the wonderful thing is that this industry really is um, broad and with many, many opportunities and pillars. And we always approach things as, you know, finding your career path and, you know, revisiting that, asking yourself some hard questions, because something that might might be the top priority for you today or was, you know, six months ago may not be your top priority anymore. And maybe you've relocated. Maybe you've mm. decided that um, that, you know, certain companies that you weren't interested in before are all of a sudden, you know, interesting to you um and so we're seeing a lot of that and one of the things that um we always encourage is is be curious research companies positions um uh, are not just defined by their skills but those skills are translated and transferred into other positions within the industry and now more than ever um, somebody who has the ability to um, cross skill who can cover you know and handle different things across a particular area um, is potentially deemed you know as as more more valuable than uh, somebody who the business may have to spend a lot of time and effort to train or somebody who doesn't have experience in those areas yeah okay great um, what uh, I mean do you see the you know ways of resume resume development per se you know um what are what do you think people are looking at um that might be different that can catch someone's eye um from resume building or the way that they present themselves um you know has that structure changed um with the out the typical outline currently and um i'm always curious do you include a photo of yourself or not include a photo you know what about like your social channels should they be private should they be open um you know and things like that i think what's what's a couple of things i'll, I'll highlight that are really positive with you know kind of the forced evolution into using more technology is that you know your digital resume um, is something that uh, you should keep up to date. Um, there are so many different ways you can efficiently search and learn about businesses and jobs and career paths. So um, I think your digital presence as a whole, whether it be on social media, on professional sites, on culinary agents, um, should, rep should represent you professionally for those, especially those sites that um, are for professional purposes and you're mm -hmm. applying to jobs with. Um, but you know there is a there is um a little bit of a gray area between now where information is just so accessible that if you have something that you wouldn't necessarily want your employer to see on your you know personal channels um perhaps making those private um you know whereas uh you know like i feel like if it's if it's public and you put it out there it's kind of fair game um mm -hmm. and so uh having your digital presence and really being intentional with what you're putting out there is something that um we've seen is, is a best practice um resumes in general um, there is definitely still a need for them they're not going any way uh, away mm -hmm. anytime soon even with your digital resume it's always a good idea mm -hmm. to have um you know, one that you can print out that you can actually hand to somebody that you're um, going to interview with, even if they've already seen your digital resume. Um, having a cover letter, a couple of different versions of your cover, cover letter that's short and succinct and kind of has, uh, ref is reflective a bit about, you know, you um, and, and what you're looking to do and why they should hire you. Um, you know, having that on hand is, is really useful so that you can tweak it to the employer versus you know having to write one from scratch every time right. um and you know following i think there's a lot of um templates out there as far as best practices of short and sweet um resumes it should not be too many pages long um you know i always i always say try to keep it to one page um but i think now that there is digital um, options. It, it really, uh, I think the thing is to understand what the business prefers also um, and try to follow those channels and those rules if you want to work for that company. Great. Um, 
would you like to walk us through a little bit of how that process works on the culinary agents website, you know, and possibly also tips for either words that should be included or not included in the resume. I under also understand that there's a lot of things since they're digital and they get pushed out to so many channels, they look for certain words, you know, choice words, I guess, too, that might be picked up. Does that exist or not really? <laughs> I think the best practices for culinary agents, for sure, one of the things we realize is that people in the food and beverage industry um, may not typically have uh, you know, all these resumes sitting around back of house folks, depending on how you had got the job, you get called in for a trail, you do a good job, you get hired. Um, you know, a lot of times, depending on the business, the, you know, the hiring manager may be um, flexible with how your resume is formatted or, or, you know, what you're sharing with them. For management type positions, you definitely want to have things structured, um, you know, more professionally and more in line with what, you know, HR folks and, and talent sourcing people are, are used to seeing. Um, I think for us, you know, we actually, you're, when you create your profile on culinary agents, we automatically format it into a digital resume. So if you just answer the questions and you fill in, you know, where you worked, you select it, and then you put your dates, et cetera, it formats it for you, and you can actually download it if you need a hard copy of it. Um, and then we make it flexible for you to easily search for jobs and then just apply with a click with your resume, and you can paste in a cover letter if you choose. Um, and then you can manage your, your um, job applications. You can also set up alerts. Um, we've really focused on, you know, what are the challenges that people in this industry typically are faced with because they don't have that much time, because they're not sitting in front of their computers all the time, and because some of the information that's emphasized by other industries may not be, uh, you know, as important or as mandatory in this industry. Um, we also work closely with businesses and talent acquisition managers and HR managers and recruiters. And so we're always listening to what they're looking for or what information they want and what formats they want. And by designing our site to fit that, by default, we're helping talent just easily kind of get in front of them. Um, I will say in addition to that, we have uh, features like I wanna work here. I always tell people to be proactive as much as you can. Right mm -hmm. now is a very exciting time for job seekers We've got businesses opening up, um, yes, in phased approaches, but they're opening up and they're planning ahead. And um, and you're seeing it already, you know, varying degrees in different states and cities that guests are ready to come out and, you know, dine and enjoy. Um, some a little too much right that poses other challenges and making sure that the employer that um, you're looking at has the you know instructions and that you're clear on how you're you know supposed to protect yourself and also protect the guests and help guests protect themselves as well um, so there are a lot of kind of new um, processes and and you know training that is coming with um, coming back to work for sure you know to protect everyone but, but the exciting time is, is that there are a lot of opportunities and what we've heard with talent is, you know, this is, this is a time to be proactive because employers are in this planning mode as well. Um, and there's a lot of uncertainties. And so using features like I wanna work here, which is literally your ability to drop off a digital resume to any employer that has that feature turned on um, is a great way to show that you're interested and this is what you're this is what position you're interested in this is when you're available and employers are you know also very interested to see what you know what new employees or what new talent is out there and who are ready and willing to to go to work right away so it, it's a really positive and opportune time for folks um who want to get back to work immediately um and uh making that known to businesses Great. Um, on the business side, you know, as opposed to just the talent, um, what are you seeing as far as um, what their real needs are? You know, I mean, what are they struggling? Are, are they struggling with certain certain areas? Um, you know, is that are there certain things that you're having to give a little more guidance on than others, um, particularly around, you know, what is it best for them to highlight on their portion of the site? 
what they are doing right and how they are following the guidelines so that that's a little bit more appealing to maybe uh, someone looking to work there. Yeah, we've been so encouraged to see how businesses are carefully and so carefully and preparing and documenting and sharing. And it's it's a really positive sign in a couple of different ways. One is the amount of thoughtfulness going in to protect their employees and their um, potential guests is as you would expect for you know hospitality businesses. Um, you know, the reality is though that they're, they are working with um, information that could potentially change, guidelines and guidances that could potentially require them to um, to purchase additional equipment and, and hit their budget in different ways. So there's a lot of planning, a lot of preparation. Um, and, you know, depending on the type of business, you know, if it's a small independent restaurant, their challenges are going to be a little different than um, perhaps some larger businesses that um, have have built into their infrastructure different ways to roll out, you know, new training or um, guidelines or budget for safety and stuff like that. Um, so I think for, for businesses, you know, a lot of them have been looking at the reality of just reduced hiring capacity because they can't open their doors up to full capacity. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what's very encouraging is a lot of businesses, of course, are looking to bring back their furloughed and their, um, you know, laid off employees. Um, and then through this process, they're realizing some, you know, the reality of some people don't want to come back uh, for, for various reasons. Um, we did a survey uh, last week with um, talent and to kind of shed some some light to businesses to help them understand kind of the different factors. And, you know, with um, with safety concerns being a real thing uh, and mm -hmm. the inability to control what a guest does, you know, you can put all the precautions in place. But if you're in certain cities and you, uh, you know, are, if, if that's a big concern, you may not want to go back to work when you're called back. Um, and then you have a situation where in certain cities and certain positions, you know, the, the employee is making more with unemployment uh, insurance right. and benefits than they potentially were if they went back to work, you know. And in those instances, I think the talent have to be really careful about the rules and guidelines of, you know, turning down work that is, you know, is you know, good work or their, their future is for it. Yeah. Right. Um, As a, yeah. And then losing on their benefits too, because they have to accept the work. So um, it's a, you know, I think every week we see things evolve. Um, you know, I see it very in a positive, it's evolving in the right direction, at least from my perspective, you see businesses thinking um, uh, about three months out and four months out versus just, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it really was, you know, who, we don't know what's going to happen in the next week. So, you know, there's only so much planning to do ahead of time. Sure. Um, what about companies or large restaurant groups that have training programs? Um, and do you highlight those um, through your clients? And again, is are there certain areas of the culinary agent site where, um, you know, it might point them into a different career path or give them direction based on algorithms or things that you've built into the profiling. Yeah, so we have, um, our site is like uh, match.com for jobs. Don't forget the for jobs okay. part. Um, yeah. And what we do specifically for talent is, you know, fill out and you, you share whatever information you would like and it's all, it's all free for talent. Um, but based upon what you're interested in and what your experience is, we actually send jobs to you through the match um, service. So it's not just, you know, fill it out and then, you know, just constantly come back. It's a, it's a two way street where not only do we make it easy for you to search and find uh, and be proactive with your resume, but also apply to jobs. Um, we also send you, um, you know, match summaries basically like jobs you might be interested in based upon what you've applied to, what you're looking at, what you're interested in and the information you've given us. Um, we'd let you set up um, job alerts. So maybe you're searching for um, bartender positions in you know, Chicago, Illinois, and just save that as a search um, and set an alert up and we'll start sending you stuff. Um, 
We also have a section on our site called um, it, virtual mentorships or get inspired site with a section of our resources, which highlights leaders um, from the industry in all different positions and all different segments of the industry and how they got there and advice that they have for aspiring talent. And what's great is that because of the way it's a nomination process, but then of course we go, they go through a vetting process with us, um, it, you know, selecting and you see how folks have changed or career changers or or have gone back and forth between restaurants and hotels and maybe food service and cruise liners and so you know that is just proof of you know my earlier comment about skills being transferable and um and opportunities really being abundant across the different pillars of the industry um i always encourage talent, the first question I ask is, well, what do you want to do, right? Ask yourself the really hard questions and, you know, what's most important to you? What do you want to do? And it's okay if, if, if making money is the most important, then find, you know, businesses that you believe will help you achieve that. And maybe it's work-life balance or you're starting a family or you've relocated somewhere and, and you need some time. Um, you know, there, there really are so many different types of opportunities out there. I think that's one of the, the wonderful things about this industry as well. And getting back to like COVID and the way the industry has just totally, you know, been turned upside down, really. Um, and many businesses for that matter, um, you know, even us on the event side, you know, um, not only just hospitality, but uh, in many different industries we could talk to. Um, but how do you see COVID really changing the landscape of job boards and agencies like yourself um, to, you know, develop talent and for people to look for positions? I mean, is, I mean, do you see a drastic, you know, change to that, that environment coming down the road or will it just be, you know, enhanced in a different way? Well, I think the interesting thing is, uh, you know, when I started culinary agents eight years ago, the biggest or the the main tool that really was well known in this industry was Craigslist. And people just knew you go there and you kind of search through it um, for both sides. And there were no, everybody knew that there there was not, um, you know, there, there's not a lot of technology behind it. There, you know, for businesses, it's just a board and they have to keep posting. Um, there's no job distribution or applicant tracking. There's no like way to save time or money. It's just a thing that they know that some people go look at. Um, and it varies by city as well. So, you know, we really thought out to offer technology to both sides that made it easier for, um, you know, for talent and businesses to connect and then also provided a lot more tools and resources to talent without them having to put forth that much more effort. So we really have become a trusted brand to curate information, to, you know, share, to really help talent. Um, and we're really, you know, with, what's, what I'm so proud of is that folks have found jobs and jobs and jobs with us and have shared us with their networks as well. I think, just as we're a technology company, so we've evolved over over the years, we continue to grow and our technology continues to evolve as well. And so I think the positive thing is with COVID, going back to your question, it's forced some companies who perhaps historically didn't want to, you know, change what their process was or adopt new technology or try, you know, posting something somewhere. Um, it, it changed their behavior because they realize that in times of you may be the most popular, you know, place or restaurant um, or, or place of work, but, you know, at some point you need to actually go out and try to recruit talent, you know, tell mm -hmm. talent why they need to sell their employer brand. Why should you work for us versus this other great company? Um, and talent, you know, should, I, I said earlier, do your research, pick, you have the pick of the pick of the pack, you know, what companies do you admire? What are the, who are the leaders that you would love to work for and why? And how do you get in front of them? And I think now everybody's a little bit more accessible and employers are much more aware that their overall employer brand, not just how they're viewed from guests and the guest experience and, and all that, but how they're viewed by talent. Right. You know, how do you recruit people? How do you get people excited to come work for you 
and work hard for you and, and follow your culture and your, your guidelines and trust you, um, you, know, you have to have your culture and your, your employer brand in place. Great. Um, so when, you know, you're looking for a position, you're utilizing the culinary agent site, you know, is volume, you know, is applying for more the best scenario, you know, and um, looking at the, all the jobs and different opportunities and kind of putting yourself that out there in a big way, or is it best to somewhat be a little more selective? So, um, or not too selective, but, you know, is it all about the numbers? So, or does it matter how many people you apply to? Um, I think it's a it's a total personal, like yeah, it's a total personal preference. Sorry to cut you off, um, because uh, it really depends on on the person. There is no formula as to if you apply to Perfect. more jobs, you're going to get a job. I mean, we, that would never happen with our our site. Um, we always encourage. I mean, theoretically, yes, if you apply to more jobs, you're going to get seen yeah. more. And you're yeah. more likely to get, you know, uh, somebody reaching out to you. Exactly. Um, I think it, it is absolutely a combination of I always encourage people to think about what you want because you're going to waste your own time and somebody else's time if you're applying to jobs and you didn't want them. Um, there's nothing wrong with practicing how to interview, et cetera. But if you if you don't focus your search um, at least, you know, into different buckets and, and really target your efforts. Uh, then you're potentially wasting your own time, um, you know, even emailing back and forth. And uh, and even if you choose to not respond to somebody who responded to your application, it's a very big but small industry. And, you know, you don't want to potentially, um, you know, taint your own your own brand um, out there because you never know who you you might run into at a, at a different employer that you really want to work at. So I always say, you know, do your research, prepare, figure out the companies um, that you'd like to work for uh, and why, um, as well as, you know, potentially some leaders at those companies or other companies that you'd like to, um, to work for. And, uh, you know, map it out and reach out and follow up and be professional and, mm. you know, and go for it. So that's great. Um, Talking about research and the companies that you might identify, um, what is the best way to research a company that you do have an interest in? Um, and are there certain channels to go to that are a little bit more, you know, um, you know, provide the, mo the best information um, or just even whether it be through LinkedIn or other vehicles? Um, any suggestions around that? And I would say that that somewhat pertains to both the talent side as well as the business side. How do they research maybe an individual who, you know, is reaching out to them to find out um, the best about, you know, their background and uh, where they came from and their talents? Yeah, and just, just as I mentioned before, where to talent about if your information is out there, it's fair game. Same goes for businesses. Um, mm -hmm. I think, uh, well, I know on Culinary Agents, we actually have a company section where we, where you can search for different businesses um, and we link the locations together and um, make it easy for talent to kind of see a little bit about it, about that particular company, and then also drop an I want to work here, um, drop their resume in if, uh, if, that, if it's turned on for that business. Um, but, you know, most businesses do have websites now um, in the US, it's not the case in you know other countries, but most mm -hmm. restaurants or hotels, um, there's a lot of information out there. Um, so definitely their website is a great place to get some information about them, clicking around. A lot of businesses will have an about us, uh, some sort of information. Um, but that's also, you know, knowing that that is information that they're putting out there willingly to the public, right? And then of course the trusty old, you know, regular search engine going on Google, seeing, you know, what other information is out there, maybe what's on Yelp. And, you know, there's so many different sites that you can gather, uh, you know, kind of a perspective um, from different angles and then conclude, um, you know, for yourself if, if this is something you want to pursue, right? I think we all know when you're, when you're looking at a site that could potentially have write-in comments and personal opinions, everybody knows there's always going to be, you know, 
some really positive comments, some not so positive comments. Um, but then if you, you can shape, um, it's really telling sometimes about, you know, how the business is responding to those. It's telling, um, you know, what, what they're sharing on their social channels, um, what they have on their website, uh, what's been written about them recently in the news, if they're growing, um, if they, you know, if, if there are certain things happening, maybe there's change of management. So you can, you can certainly, I, I always recommend, you know, narrow down your, your businesses and then dive in deep to do mm. your research. That's great. Good advice. Um, and then really the only other thing is, I, I think just touching upon, you know, the individual um, and, you know, what advice do you have for them looking into how to broaden their, you know, their backgrounds, um, whether it be additional courses or educational training and um, are there other resources that you would point them in a certain direction? Um, and is that available also on the culinary agents, you know, site? Yes. Yeah. So we just kicked off the first series of our skills um, articles, um, which is uh, what we do a lot of times or most of the time is our goal is to curate information, find um, things that would be helpful for our audience based upon all the data that we have, and then make it accessible in a very easily digestible way um, because, you know, nobody has time to read, you know, maybe 10 pages of something. We net it down, give you the, give you the most important pieces, and hopefully you can, you know, read that and digest it on your way to work or during your 15-minute break or something. Um, mm -hmm. And so we do have um, in the resource section of Culinary Agents, there are you know tips of you know, for your post-COVID uh, job search and everything. Um, so I definitely recommend you check out some of those resources. Um, for me, uh, I would say you know a couple of things to prepare is um, you know get your resume together, get your cover letters. Um, the thing I still go back to that I think is is very important is um, asking yourself the hard questions and starting from there because you can do all this research but if you don't really know like what you want or you haven't at least gone through the the mental process of what do you really want um then your search could be very you know all over the place i think um or i've seen um and so by by ask going through the the initial preparation of honing in on right now what what do you need to you know get get you into the next next phase of your career um, and then having that be the kickoff to your you know search process I think is the, the most important. Well culinary agent seems like a great place to start in a sense of you know it is daunting to have to especially if you what if you've been in a role for many years right with a particular company and that's no longer an option you know having to start at, from scratch again where you've never haven't done this in many years um, so the fact that you have something that they can fill out and makes them think about what it is they're looking to do, right? And having to choose the questions um, yeah. will, will make things a little bit easier, you know, for those individuals. Um, and also, let's just talk about um, BCB and, and our website and what we're going to be doing with culinary agents, which would be to, we're going to have um, a job board, um, which will be then in turn powered by culinary agents down the road and we're in the process of working together on that. Um, so it's coming soon, it's not quite here yet, but um, that'll be great. Um, so all of our, um, you know, BCB, uh, you know, friends and family and community um, could really, you know, utilize BCB as well to get to the culinary agents uh, platform. And um, that'll also be another vehicle um, so when they're visiting with us, we can, you know, um, give them that opportunity to guide them in the right direction and make sure that they also see the resources of culinary agents. Um, so we're excited about that. So, um, and then lastly, I know that there were some, are there any other uh, links or details that you want to point out um, with regards to the site um, and to give people a little more direction? I know that once we wrap up here, um, we'll be following up with an email to all of our attendees um, and registered, uh, you know, those who registered um, and uh, we'll be giving all those links uh, and the link to culinary agents, of course, so this way um, they can have it at their fingertips. Yeah, I mean, 
first of all, we're super excited to be powering the, the job board for um, for you all because you know we we recognize that the more places, the easier we make these um, jobs accessible, the better it is for everyone. We're helping businesses get their opportunities in mm -hmm. front of talent and uh, you know making it easy for talent to find them and to apply to the jobs. So thank you for that. I'm very excited. Um, I will say equally excited about you know what's in store for the industry as you know the reality is is the road to recovery is going to be phased out and there will be bumps but you know this mm -hmm. industry as we all know is made up so of the amazing. most resilient you know resourceful people who um just want to get back to work and serve people right and it's just so heartwarming and um so encouraging and so motivational across the board and i know that if you look at the positives out of all the things that have happened the past couple of months there is absolutely no doubt that the independent restaurant community came together and made the government made everybody realize how much this uh group of of businesses and people contribute to you know the the economy oh, tribute okay. to Absolutely. culture to everything so you know i'm always looking for kind of the the nuggets of the the bright side and the positives and how we can grab those and run with them and those definitely are things that we're seeing consistently um and you know i i, I forgot to mention that to your earlier question with skills is that we also have been aggregating kind of free training classes and things that we've seen that people are offering now there's definitely um, you know, organizations who have started to open up their portfolio of, you know, classes and education to the hospitality workers because of the time. Um, so we, we've got some good content from Escoffier schools, for example, and, um, you know, making it accessible and, and free for everyone. So I say a good old, a good old website search may reveal there's a lot of stuff out there that you can kind of freshen up on or, um, you know, get the basics on. Yeah, it definitely takes time. But um, I think, like you said, things are opening up. Um, we have to think on the bright side. This community is beyond resilient. And, uh, you know, I, I am hopeful. Um, and I know, you know, the community is hopeful. And uh, I, I know we'll get through this for sure. So um, just want to say thank you. Really appreciate your time. It's you. wonderful. I really enjoyed the chat. And uh, we look forward to uh, getting this job board up and running um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, if you know, hopefully by middle of July at the latest. Yeah. Um, but, uh, there's a lot of back of house stuff that has to come into play with all of that. Um, but thank you again uh, to you and uh, culinary agents, and uh, we look forward to uh, working together. Thank you, Paula. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye, Take care. Bye.